These are good lessons that we can take from the pros. Try it all and then start incorporating that into races. Accept pain as a friend. Ooh. Ah. Oh, sweaty mess. Swift, you are a bit of a biznitch when it comes to Bluetooth connectivity. Lesson today and yesterday for Zwift, it does not work very well with a MacBook. Works best off of an iPhone, so I got an old iPhone SE that I'll hook up and make my dedicated Zwift thing because uh, I gotta get this out because linking from Zwift mobile link to the MacBook to the Apple TV, just too much that can go wrong. So just from the iPhone SE to that, and then we should be good. Also lesson for the day, do not turn right before the end of the Everest climb. Hammered it for 23 minutes, was gonna get to like fifth overall, and then I was like, oh yeah, it looks like I need to turn right here. You do not turn right. 23 minutes? Lost. So yesterday we did the podcast with Sarah Crowley, third place in Kona this year. First podium finisher from Kona that I've talked to. There were like a bunch of lessons that she just mentioned as like, oh yeah, I did this, that are really good lessons for age group triathletes to learn. Doesn't matter if you're going for a podium spot on Kona. These are good lessons that we can take from the pros who get on the podium on Kona. Like for instance, Number one, you're never having a bad race, especially in the longer distance races because there's so much that can go wrong. It's almost inevitable that something's gonna go wrong, but you can come back for it. For instance, think about Patrick Lange. He was 10 to 11 minutes down coming into T2, and I didn't even think that he was a factor. Daniela Reef, six minutes down on Lucy Charles with just 40 kilometers left in the bike, and then she hammers it and does the fastest run of the day. Sarah Crowley herself, she crashed coming into Kauai High. Crashed! And ran out of bananas with 40K left in the bike. She didn't have any food. Like these are disastrous things that a lot of age groupers like us would just like, oh my God, my race is done, I screwed up. But no, these people are winning, setting all-time records in the sport, coming from behind, turning it around, having breakthrough performances, even though things go wrong. And Sarah talked about it yesterday, like, oh yeah, I'm so pumped up at how that race went, even with the crash to finish on the podium, that's encouraging. Instead of looking back and thinking, oh, what could have been if I didn't crash? So, there's lesson number one. You smart, Sarah, you smart pro. Now the next lesson that we can learn from the pros is how critical it is to, loud, critical it is to do the volume while not overcooking yourself. Rest is absolutely critical. And we saw this with Lionel Sanders over the last three years. One year, he was so intimidated by the distance that he just smashed himself over and over and over doing, I think, a total of nine days at seven hours plus of training. Came to the race and he was so cooked that of those nine days, the race was actually his slowest performance another year he didn't really respect the distance. He didn't do any race simulation days, I think longer than four and a half hours, comes to the race, totally flat, falls apart. This year, he did enough race simulation days of around six to seven and eight hours. But what he did was as soon as he started feeling fatigued, he took two days outright off and two days of active recovery sequentially. So then when he got to the race, he hadn't accumulated enough fatigue to even really justify much of a taper. And he came in feeling fantastic because he was basically training into the race, sharpening up while not having beat down his body so much that he was just coming in like, oh my God. So while training really hard is important, it's also really important to recognize the signals of your body and knowing when you've got to back off and then you probably have to back off throughout the course of an entire year more than you'd think. Mark Allen, for instance, I think he used to take three, four months completely off and he won a couple Konas. How Canadian is this? A minus 30 parka and flip-flops underneath. Big progress happening in Triathlon Terran HQ today. It's gonna to be totally 
insulated, and I think tomorrow, drywall, wall board. And then we'll be able to show you a little bit of progress. Now the third thing that we can learn from the pros in Kona is that triathlon, even still at that long distance where the bike actually makes up a huge portion of the race, is that it's still basically a running race. So even though we had like Cameron Wirth and Sebastian Keenly, Lionel Sanders breaking bike course records, the three men on the podium had three of the four fastest runs on the day, and then the three women on the podium had three of the five fastest runs on the day. And that's not to say that only good runners can win, but it's just to say that you need to be fresh off the bike and be able to still run well. So what I recommend is that you always, always have brick workouts in whatever training that you're doing, a little bit of speed workout in your run so that you can get as fast as possible. In my case, a 128 half marathon, we wanna get that half marathon in a half Ironman to be as close to 128 as possible. And that only happens by doing lots and lots of bike volume so that the bike doesn't just smash you up and doing lots of brick workouts so that your body's just like, it's just kind of ready to run after a bike. This is my new jacket, by the way. I walked in and I said, I want a really warm jacket. And they're like, ooh, this one's very good for Winnipeg winters. Like, what do you got for Arctic temperatures? I run cold and they're like, ooh, that's pretty warm. I'm like, I want that one. Come on guys, let's go. All right. The fourth thing that we can learn from the pros in Kona is that there is no one best approach coming into their race or any race or how you structure your equipment, how you structure your training plan. Lionel Sanders, he really undertrained himself throughout the entire year. Sarah Crowley basically had four A races over the course of the entire year on the bikes with their gear. Besides Ceramic Speed and Shimano Di2 absolutely dominating their individual categories, the types of wheels, the types of cranks, the types of rubber, the types of saddles, basically everything was like this hodgepodge of triathletes using whatever they found worked well for them. So the lesson in that is that you have to train a lot. You've got to race a lot. You've got to try a lot of gear. You've got to watch a lot of triathlon Terran videos to get a lot of different ideas for what might and might not work for you. Try it all and then start incorporating that into races. See how it works for you. And then the more you do it, the more you're going to be able to dial in your exact setup training schedule, race plan, all that stuff. And then finally, the last thing that we can learn from the pros in Kona is that they go into a race and we should be going into a race mentally prepared to suffer. Pros from back in the day, like Chris McCormick, who won twice, saying that he was preparing himself mentally to basically accept pain as a friend when it came up. So six hours into the race, when all of a sudden he'd start getting a stitch, he was ready to say, oh, hello, pain. Thank you for coming here. That means that I'm pushing myself really hard. So instead of when pain comes up and thinking, oh, I'm in such pain, maybe I should stop, you have to mentally prepare yourself for it to come because in every race, it comes on. We're gonna have that self-talk in our head telling us to stop, telling us to walk, telling us to take it easy. But if we've prepared ourselves leading into that, that the pain is gonna come and it's just part of the race and that's a good thing, then, were prepared to do it. And something that Mark Allen said when we had him on the podcast, by the way, Triathlon Terran podcast is freaking killing it. Thank you all. If you haven't subscribed yet, go check it out. Go subscribe. We have an excellent podcast out right now with an age grouper, Ben Fuquay. And Mark Allen would say that if you can prepare your mind to have that chatter turn off quicker than the other people, that's a huge leg up because the stress that your brain and your body goes through with that constant negative talk for minutes or hours on end in a race, that's draining on your body. So there we go, Trainiacs. Even though Kona is a month and a half since gone, 
pros don't talk about their race strategy, their nutrition plan. Quite often they're changing gear right up until the bike check-in the night before the race. So coming into something like Kona, because pros are so secretive, we don't necessarily know a whole lot about what goes into that race. Now that we are out of Kona, we can start finding out more about what their mental state was like and what their preparation was like leading into these races. So I am going to beat this dead horse of Kona for as long as you'll let me because I love analyzing it and it's a lot of fun. <laughs>